guys welcome to the channel so today we're going to replace the primary clutch bearing on my maverick aspen 3.1 that's one of these along with the two washers that go along with it just got this kit from all balls racing uh, ran about 40 bucks to ship to the house so when i got this uh i got this one uh, slightly used um, as i've said in the intro uh, i believe the previous owner ran this around in some georgia clay and never really cleaned out the belt and uh, that was actually causing some issues with the primary clutch bearing. Uh, it was running all the time. It was hard to shift. So uh, I managed to get in there with a the blower and clean it out. And it worked well for a while. Became an issue again. I finally broke down and ordered the whole uh, actual uh, correct tools to take the primary clutch apart. To actually get in there and clean that bearing, inspect it. One of the washers looked a little worn. And I did re-grease the bearing, put it all back together. It was okay, and after the next ride, it's it's making that horrific sound again and getting to be hard to shift. So I decided to just take it apart and uh, replace it like I probably should have in the get-go. So first things first, we'll get into the tools. All right, so let's go ahead and go over all the tools that you're going to need to do this job yourself. These should be the vast majority of the tools. Like I said, I'll put up the whole list on there uh, for you to see. Um, if you don't have this much light, headlamps come in a, a good handy. Uh, you'll need some sort of impact to get the primary clutch off. There's no doubt about it. It's on there with like 90 foot-pounds. So it's going to have to go back on at 90-something foot-pounds. Definitely going to need a torque wrench. Power tools are always optional, but man, they make life easy. Especially when they have the little adapter there for the quarter-inch drive to uh, get all the uh, bolts off the clutch cover. Um, ratchet, few wrenches. Uh, the... Really the big size here is the eight millimeter. You're gonna have a lot of those. And then the seven millimeter for the clamps. Depending on what you gotta do, might need the breaker bar. You probably need something to hold the uh, clutches still. Let's get into it. Okay, so there's, there are two ways to do this. Up front, there's a uh, the, the rear sway bar. You either have to take that all the way apart on both sides to remove it, to have enough space to actually get to the primary bolt to take it out, or the, uh, my, in my opinion, the faster and easier way to do it is just to jack it up. So that's what I'm going to do. I already got the front chalked because I don't like this thing running off. And the jack stands are already there just for uh, ease of use. My uh, Christmas present, jack, of course, probably need one of these all the time. I know I'm going to catch some heat for it being a, a Harbor Freight jack, but it's, uh, it works like a champ. All right, safety first, guys. So another Christmas present. I got some nice six-ton jack stands. Not that this thing weighs that much, but that you definitely have to have that extra height just to keep these off the ground. All right, guys, first things first, the old seven millimeter. Get this uh, air intake off. And then I kind of like to shove it up here. It'll stay out of the way. Takes a little bit of force. All right, so next is uh, the eight millimeters are all the bolts that hold the cover on all the way around. Like I showed you before, if you're real slick, get your impact driver or a drill and you can get most of these off with a good extension and a U-joint. I made pretty light work of that. On the RS's, the trailing arm actually sticks out a little bit further. It makes this next part a little easier. And this is always a pain on this one. It loves to get hung up on the bolt, sometimes to the point that you gotta lower the jack to get it done. All right, now that I've lowered it, you can pull this thing right out. So the, when you jack these things up, it actually brings the rears together, so you kind of lose clearance. Forget about that sometimes. I'll set that aside and jack it back up. All right, guys, so one of the tools I forgot to mention, you can either use the factory tool for this. Uh, this one, like I said, came with uh, the quick tool. 
And luckily, we've never had to use this on the trail, so just the washer goes on. Make sure those bearings are going the right way. They won't work very well the other way. And then it's just the pull. And you see the whole belt, the secondary's gone slack and the belt's loose. So I think it's usually easiest to get it off forward, but this is always a struggle. No, just kidding. I always go the other way first. Yeah, what was I thinking? And you just kind of work it off. It'll get hung up on these little veins if you're not careful. If you're reusing it, make sure you're careful to not hurt it on the way off. Buy yourself a little slack here and there. And it's also important to look at the orientation of the belt. So this belt is a uh, world's best belt. And I can see the writing is facing me. So I know that it's got to go back on the same way. So now, this doesn't matter. You can either pull it off or out of the way. Because the belt's going to have to go around it. And then you're going to have just enough space for it to just pop off like that. It never happens like that normally. We'll gently set this aside for reuse later. And then now this has to come off. So to get a primary out of here without removing the spring or shock assembly here, you have to remove the secondary. So I'm going to go grab the impact and uh, we'll gun this thing right off. This one doesn't require anything special. It will just come off because it's on a splined shaft and not a taper. All right, so I went and got my handy impact you saw earlier and I've already got the compressor charged up. So that is a 17 millimeter. And that's all there is to that. Sometimes that washer will come out, sometimes it won't, but make sure you don't lose it. It's important. And then that just slides right off. Now would also be an excellent time to clean this. Yep. All right, we're swapping over. This is the 22. This is the reason we had to jack it up, as you can tell, that you won't have enough clearance between your rear sway bar link and the bolt to get anything in here. Even if this didn't have the extra inch and a half anvil, you'd never get it on there. So in this, uh, if you've never done this before, it is a little weird. It actually has two sets of threads in there. So the actual threads, what would be in that shaft, you'll see in a second. And then there are threads in the clutch. So there's no torque on them, but you will have to run it past it. So if it, don't worry about it jamming up. It'll come right out. Just unscrew it. I don't like to use the gun for that. Just always worried something bad's gonna happen with threads. All right, so that's the bolt, same thing. Uh, another washer on that one. All right, so you'll need the primary clutch for removal tool. Uh, these things aren't incredibly expensive and they actually come in the kit if you ever do anything where you just wanna be able to take this off. So same thing, this is actually gonna grab the threads that are in the primary clutch and it's gonna push against the bottom of what the, the shaft you'll see here in a second and force this clutch off. And it's always a good idea to kind of grease those threads and the tip of it just to make sure you're not galling anything, causing any damage. All right, so my particular tool happens to be a 19 millimeter. I don't know that that's standard amongst all of these, but that's what mine is. And this is a Titan function. You're threading it in to push this off the uh, shaft. And that was easier than it had any right to be. Oh, it's okay. It's going to pay me back, though, because now the tool's jammed in there, as is what usually happens. All right. Yes, you do have to take this tool out. You don't have the clearance in here. Uh, maybe you do on an RS. I haven't tried that yet. But on the DSs, you don't. 
So that went very smoothly. We got the primary clutch off, the crankshaft, tools out, and the primary clutch is off. So that's what we'll actually be replacing is that primary clutch bearing. Okay, so here we are, we're over at the workbench. We got our new parts. We're gonna inspect the old parts and make sure they're the same dimensionally. So first things first is to run the remover bolt back in there before you put on the plate. So I got the KWI one. It was a good deal. It's a nice piece. Um, I liked it. It actually has a steel insert into the aluminum uh, center part that you're actually pressing against. Some of them are all aluminum and I, I just can't help but think that might be an issue using this thing two or three times. So I like to flip it over and make sure I have as many threads internally as possible. If you screw up the threads internally, this clutch is wrecked. You won't be able to get it back off again. So try to avoid that. That goes on top. You loosen that up. So I'm sure you can tell this bolt is a standard bolt. It has it's a grade 8 bolt, which means it's standard SAE size. So for mine that's 15 sixteenths. I know most of this is metric. So be aware of that. So the center goes on, then the adapter plate goes on. This will actually push up onto this and split this clutch right apart. So it came with these six cap head bolts. I don't torque these on or anything crazy, but I do make sure that they are threaded in all the way. The last thing you want to do is go hurting your clutch. If you didn't use an impact, there are there is a threaded hole on this side that you can run a bolt into for you to hold on to it while you're running that in. Uh, I'll use an impact and it's not that big of an issue. So there we are. I like to start right there at tenseness, make sure everything's okay. And then as you run it in, you'll see a you'll see a slight pop or a give, and that's it. Or in this case, a significant pop and give. And then run that bolt back out. Pull these back out. And the clutch is split. So a little side note. I tried to do this the hard way and I went looking for a different puller or trying to do the hammer method and whatever else. As it turns out, those parts are pretty well machined and once they've been together once, I couldn't get it to come apart. And maybe if you worked on big trucks, you might have a puller big enough, but the regular stuff I had was not anywhere near large enough to hook in here anywhere. So let's go get the right part. Take this bad boy back out. And the clutch will come right apart. So that's what we're after. I'll clean up this whole thing anyways. That's literally it, if you can see that. Just a little bit of a taper fit fits into the primary clutch just underneath this plate and that is what holds that whole thing together so you just saw me take the bearing off this is the old one i swear it looks okay and i don't see anything immensely wrong with it but it's clearly been hurt i will say these washers i know it's hard to see that but this washer is uh has seen better days it's got pretty good indentations into it and clearly missing some of that washer and then the other washer, um, sometimes it stays on one side or the other. Just kidding, that was the top washer. So there's the bottom washer. It doesn't look as bad, but we'll be replacing both of them. So I'm probably going to grab my caliper. Uh, according to All Balls, this was the same one. But I'll double check those dimensions. It looks spot on, perfect replacement. 
Um, it does look like this one does has developed a bit of a taper down there, and you can see where it's missing some material. Whereas this one has nice straight flat edges. All right, so when I had this apart the other day and I re-greased this, I did go and take the time to scotch bright both sides of this. It had been a while um, just to clean everything up, try to get rid of some of those ridges. So the, everything you see on here is actually fresh belt material. Um, I'm not going to do that again today. But what I will do, and I caution everybody to do, is make sure you put this back together as clean as possible. Probably going to hit this with some brake cleaner, wipe it down really well, make sure there's no grease left. The last thing you want to do is find grease on that belt. All right, so you can probably hear this. This does have a little bit of a, a play and movement in it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. Uh, I'm probably not going to show all that. I'm just curious if there's a, a big difference now that I have something new to compare it to. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean these up with a little bit of a brake cleaner now. And as you can see, if you look carefully, I found this last time. I was sort of disappointed. Um, the little uh, marks right in there, those are actually etchings. You can actually drag that with your fingernail. Um, I presume that's where a bearing got caught in there. And uh, it, the fact that it wasn't moving for a while and it was still being ridden and driven, uh, I imagine caused most of that. So I've recently serviced this, but if you hadn't, now would be a good time to get in here. Uh, this thing will actually pull off. I'm not going to do it because you'll lose those little pieces, and I'm not doing all that again. But it'd be a good time to get in here. This whole thing will lift up and check all your weights and make sure they're moving. Make sure you haven't lost any of those cups. If you want to replace the O-rings, um, if you're going to change weights, um, you got to take this whole thing apart to do it. They say you can do this on the car. You can you can do this on the uh, car without taking the whole thing off, but why would you? I couldn't imagine trying to work on this on the Maverick and losing a little O-ring or something, but that's up to you guys if you want to do it that way. I'm just going to put a little grease in here just to give it some sort of lubrication. Don't want to go ham. You don't want to pack this like a wheel bearing. Because if um, you, you put too much in here, these seals can only do so much. And this grease will come out. This thing wiped down. And this stood back up. All right, so don't forget your washer. One washer down. Make sure it goes all the way down there. Drop that bad boy on. And then one washer goes on the top. This just sets right back down in there there's nothing that holds this together until you put the bolt back in it on the crankshaft all right we're back over here at the maverick putting this thing back on since this is loose be careful not to dump this out and lose all your pieces probably be upset with yourself you know like give everything a good wipe down make sure we didn't we're not contaminating anything or putting anything in any seals Whole thing will go past there. With a little bit of luck. Or turning it the correct way will help. Alright, so that's that. We have the bolt. And now we're happy there. So next up, I'll grab the uh, torque wrench and uh, torque this down to I think it's 89 foot pounds is the factory specification for that all right if you don't have a friend or somebody else to hold this primary clutch still that's what the pry bar is for because there's no good way to hold on to this thing uh, what i usually do is i'll run in a couple of bolts up here and uh, i'll keep the pry bar down low but i'll start the i'll start the torque and i'll get it till it can't anymore at least so i'm not sitting here holding it any longer than I have to. Um, I just happen to have two of the correct bolts. 
Um, I imagine you could also use the cap head bolts that came in the kit. Be another option. I just happen to have these bolts from another puller that are the same threads. And again, I will fully thread these in as far as I can get them. And then I will only put the pry bar way down here. I actually had three of these bolts and I bent one because I just let it come out a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's an awful lot of leverage and torque on this. So just be uh, a little cautious. All right, we got a good double pop, 90 foot pounds. We'll run these back out. Just because this part is so deep, it's hard to get in there and get that started. So I normally drop it in there and try with the socket. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries because you got to use a deep well so it won't come out either. And this is spline, so just gently feel your way on it. And then it'll slide right in. I think I got lucky with the bolt. Yep, sure did. So this one's the same thing. Uh, depending on what you got, uh, you usually get a pry bar to rest on a CV axle. So this is torqued to 52 foot-pounds. And then I always do this slow and gently, even though it's not as much torque, just because of what you're torquing on and how you have to hold it still. All right, so there you have it. It's all put back together. So we'll grab the belt, slide it over the primary. It goes right back on, and then we just have to get it past this actually I think I'm going to put the whole belt back on but I won't be able to uh, install it until I put the tool in yeah don't forget this thing will spin so like you don't have to worry about spinning this if you're if you're space limited and it locks out it does go just over 90 but be uh, be careful not to bump that thing and Get your finger snapped. There you have it. And then I'll do this in an easy way. Just like that. You can't usually get away with spinning the uh, secondary off the same way you can putting it on. But you do have to spin it. You see the belt still floppy loose. So you got to spin this to get the uh, secondary to go back into position. And you definitely want to do this before turning it on. You see the belt's now tight and it's riding high in the pulley. Not just slack. So. There we have it. Clutch is all put back together, ready to go. So next step is the cover and then the air intake. Before we do that, I do like to go ahead and start it at this point and uh, keep an eye on this, make sure everything goes back and is happy, just so I don't have to get to the point to take all this back apart, I know now. Mission success for that. So now we'll go ahead and throw the cover back on. Now, I've recently had all this apart and cleaned it. Obviously, if you've been through whatever, now might be a good time to replace that seal, clean out the seal, clean this apart. I also went ahead and took out, uh, this is a 21. It did come with the uh, noise liner or whatever. 
I've since taken it out. I can't hear a bit of difference uh, between that and wearing the EarPro slash Arcardo headsets. I can't hear a difference. And it seemed like every time that thing got wet, it just stayed wet anyways. So wasn't worth it. I do not use power tools to put these back in. Uh, Bill actually stripped out one of his doing that with just that impact. So they are an eight millimeter. They're also a Torx. If you want to use it, if you have that tool for doing it, I don't really think it makes a bit of difference. You always have to drop one. If you don't drop one, the job's not done. Um, in fact, I'm a little concerned right now because I'm not bleeding yet. So I'm, I'm actually concerned how good of a job I really have done here. But we're going to go with it because every now and then you get out lucky. So I got them all started. Make sure we didn't screw anything up with any of that. Got them all accounted for. So I'll go ahead and run them all in. To almost finish. Because it's a ceiling surface, I do really like to take my time with this. Um, a lot of trails around here have a lot of water. And the belt and water do not get along. If you leave one of these out, believe it or not, it's enough to cause a leak. So, I'll tighten all these up just enough, and then I'll go back around and do a final torque, make sure I didn't miss any. A little self quality control here. All right, there we go, all the way around. And I did miss one over here, so glad I double checked myself. You can use a nut driver or a screwdriver for this part, for the clamp. But I just usually like to use the seven millimeter on a ratchet. Just makes life a little easier for me. Things getting jammed in there. Usually kind of start at the back, work your way forward. And then there's a plastic tab there. So that should fit right between there. And it also makes sure you know you've gone far enough and this thing will make a good seal. To check everything else over, kind of the visual once over, make sure I haven't bumped or messed with anything, but I think we've, we've done it today. All right, well, thanks for joining me today as we went through all this and getting that bearing replaced. I hope you learned something. This would work for a lot of other uh, Can-Am uh, machines as well. That particular kit from All Balls, was they had like 30 listings from everything from a Defender uh, to their what is their semi-sport one? I can't think of it. The one I don't fit in, uh, as well as the Mavericks and such. So it may also be useful for all of those. If it looks the same, uh, as far as the primary clutch is concerned, it's the same process to get that apart. So I'm going to go for a test drive. Hope this thing works. And uh, I have all faith it will. So thanks again. Please like and subscribe. And you'll see more videos in the future. Luca was a good boy all day.